Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to show you how to replace a tired steering rack with a refurbished one from 914 Rubber and also install turbo tie rods. Now the big upgrade with the turbo tie rod is that it's a much more solid connection to the wheels and that's why you get better handling, better feel, better response all the way around. Let's get started. We have to remove the bolts that connect the steering rack to the auxiliary bar uh, under the car here. They're 17 millimeter and we're just gonna pull them off. Here's the tie rod end and the castle nut with the cotter pin, which we'll take off and then remove the nut. Use an impact wrench for this, make quick work of it. <coughs> and that was quick work. <laughs> and just use the tie rod puller here to separate everything. To make sure that your wheels are pointing straight, the steering wheel is centered, and then go into the universal joint here, remove the bolt, and then put a screwdriver in the slot there to open up the joint and make it easier for somebody underneath the car to pull the old rack down and out. Notice that there's a flat spot so the bolt can pass through near the splines at the top of the short column here. You're gonna to wanna to take note of that orientation so you can put it back the same way. The tie rods in this car are shot. I mean, look at the, first of all, the dry rot. You can see the cracking. And look how much these move. I mean, no wonder the car is not handling well. So we're gonna put some 911 turbo tie rods on here and things will be a lot better. Well, here's my steering rack spread out on the workbench here. And the next thing I'm gonna do is take off this uh, lower part of the steering column. And in order to do that, you'll see that I've got to bend these tabs back. They're safety tabs to make sure that the bolts don't back out. Now that I've got the safety pulled back, I'm going to use my ratchet to pull this out. And I'm going to use a vice grip to stabilize this against the bench so that I have some leverage to undo the thing. <coughs> okay. All right, well that worked. You can use a vise too, but it's a little unwieldy because this thing is so big. So this first one's loose. Now I'm just going to get the other one. Loosen these up. And there it comes, free. So you'll see that there are two bolts that hold the top part on, and then these two bolts hold it to the rack. Okay, so here's the inside of the rack. Now, because I've got a rebuilt rack, and I'm sending this back as a core, I don't really need to do anything else with this, except maybe salvage the springs that uh, hold the bellows on. I'm gonna get the bolts out of this side. The only way I'm gonna get any kind of leverage is to put it in a vise, so that's what I've done here. It's the same deal, just bending these down and unscrewing them. And that'll get this hockey puck off, which looks pretty tired, and then these uh, sleeves that'll come out too. It's a little scary how loose that was. So this is the famous hockey puck. Guess why they call it that. And here's the hardware from the bottom part, and I have the other two bolts on the other bench. And here's my new refurbished steering rack from 914 rubber. They did a really nice job. Everything looks super clean. Things move really smoothly. You can see compared to the old rack, just a little bit of difference. New puck from 914 rubber, which comes with the sleeves and a hardware kit and the fold-up tabs. So I don't really need to keep anything from here. Just the steering column, or this piece of the steering column anyway. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna salvage these springs, and there's no reason I can't reuse them. So I'm careful about how I take them off, which I just was. So I can already feel that this rubber hockey puck is so much better. So we'll take the column here, and the hockey puck with the sleeves, and we'll put a brand new, fresh, protector over it and then thread some bolts in. 
So there's how it looks on the top. And now you see that little space in there? That's so that we can get this in. And we'll put it in kind of diagonally. And drop the other sleeves in. Then we'll kind of slide it around. That's kind of how it looks. Fresh and clean. So the coupler, the hockey puck here to the steering shaft, is calling for 18 foot-pounds. So that's what I've got my torque wrench set to. And we're going to go ahead and torque it up. I'm not going to do it all on one side first. I'm going to try to balance it out a little bit. I'm going to use a hammer and a drift to push this down like it was. I know it's moving in the vise, but I'm almost done. Here's where we're going to want to make sure that the relief in the lower part of the steering column is oriented the same way it was when it was in the car. And the way to do that is to make sure that the steering rack is centered as if the wheels were straight and install this piece in the same orientation. You have a 50-50 shot, it's either up or down. Just gotta tighten them down. Before we go ahead and put the new turbo tie rods onto the refurbished rack, I just wanna show you the difference between the turbo tie rod and the standard original tie rod. So you can see that there's just a lot of play in here. Obviously that's because it's old, if you got new bushings and you got this freshened up, it would be a lot tighter, but it'll never be as tight as what you got going on in the turbo tie rod. The kit that comes from Elephant includes these very thick washers, and they serve two purposes. One is that if you just screwed this into the rack, there would be a tiny little space between this and the rack. It doesn't quite hit home, so you want to have something that it'll push against. And the other thing is that it acts as a stop to prevent the rack from hyper extending in any direction and so now I've got it assembled but you'll see one of the things that's really different about the turbo tie rods is that it's possible for them to go completely straight the old ones because of the spec and the way Porsche designed the rack there is a slight angle here so there's a can't you actually can't completely straighten these out so to make sure that the distance is accurate, there's really two ways. You can either measure from here to here, or what you can do is lay the racks like this and try to match the angles and get the measurement that way. I think it's hard to get this measurement from here to here because this angle is involved. And it's tough to get the tape measure or whatever you're using to exactly this point. Okay, so now the trick is to see if we can make sure that the tie rods are adjustable to the correct length. What I'm doing is making sure that I've got the two racks exactly side by side. They're lining up there and lining up here. So I know now that they're in the same place. It's not an exact science and I'm gonna go and take this to get aligned, of course, after I'm done. I just wanna make sure that I can drive it to the alignment shop relatively safely. So now here we can see that the angle is pretty similar and the original is a little further out than the new one. And we can see that it's about the same distance on this side as well. So that's good. That means that there's enough adjustment play in here that I can pull things out. If this was already kind of at this point or a little past it, I might want to go with thinner washers um, so that I could have a little bit more adjustment. But it looks like right now I can go with the thick washers and what I'll do is just spin these out to get them to the same general place. You just take the tie rod end and unscrew it. And then this nut is going to wedge up against to tighten it up and make sure that that's tight before you go on the road. Of course, when they go to the alignment shop, they're going to change this, probably, but that's generally the procedure. Now that I know that the spacer setup is going to work and I'll have enough adjustment room, what I'm going to do 
is take out these tie rods and put them in for real. So to assemble the tie rod into the steering rack, I'm going to use a little bit of blue Loctite. You don't really have to, but steering's kind of important to me. <laughs> and since everything uh, in the steering rack is going to be covered by a boot and the belly pan and everything else, it's going to be a little bit difficult to get access to it and really check on it. So I'm just putting a little bit on to uh, as an insurance policy. We just spin that in and get it going. So to tighten this up, you're going to need a special wrench and this is the deal. 32 millimeters. I'll put a link below so you'll know how to order one but you can get it at a bike shop or online there isn't really a torque value for this and obviously you can't torque it because this isn't a torque wrench but you want to get it nice and tight or as they say good and tight that's the german version put this one on These turbo tie rods, because this is a 360 degree joint, you don't really have to worry about getting it locked in any one particular orientation like the original ones. And again, I have my 32 millimeter wrench. <clears throat> I do good and tight. Pull the old rack back up and measure it and make sure that uh, we're in a good place. But again, the angle, parallel, and then you want these lined up. And of course, making sure that the racks are aligned too. Now that I've got it roughed in, what I'm gonna do is measure the old rack, which is about 43 inches to the center of the bolt. To get the precise measurement, I'm gonna remove the castle nuts so that I can really go bolt to bolt. I want it to be 43, and it's about 43 and a half now, so I'm gonna go a few turns in on each one of these tie rods ends to get it right. We're looking for 43, and that's what we have. So that's just about perfect. And now what I'm gonna do is mark everything, because I've actually gotta take these ends off now to get the boots on. Obviously, if you're just changing the turbo tie rods with the rack in the car, um, it may be a little more difficult, but the process is the same. All the steps are anyway. But I do recommend these uh, rebuilt racks from 914 Rubber. Really saves a lot of hassle, and it allows you to do everything on the bench like we're doing here now. So now, I'm going to remove these ends so that I can get the boots on. I salvaged the springs from the boot covers on the old rack and I'm going to see what I can use on this one. I believe I can only use one of them and I'll have to zip tie the other. So the fat part goes on first. You definitely want to make sure that this is all tight and everything is ready to go before you do this because once you put this on this is all going to be hidden. Before I put the boot on, I'm going to slide the spring ring over and get it into position. And you gotta make sure the spring ring is on the other side of this channel so that when you put the rubber boot on, you can slip it back. So here we go. Uh, we'll rub, slip the rubber boot on. So we need to get this up and into here. So I'm just gonna try to get as far as I can with my fingers and then use a plier just being really careful about how we're pulling this up this part of the job is pretty tedious but once you get it going it snaps in pretty good it does kind of snap just come up and over baby and there it is. That's not going anywhere at all.
And now what I've got to do is I've got to get this end over the other stop, which is easier to see, obviously, on this on this other one that I haven't done yet. So here's where the first part of the rubber boot goes, and there's where the second part goes. So I'm just going to compress this boot and get it to stretch over the stop. The one thing you don't want to do is rip this boot, since it's the only thing keeping dirt from getting inside your rack. So gentle use of the plier. Don't rip it. Go slow. And there you have it. And here's what it looks like. So what happens is, as you turn the steering wheel, see, compresses, and then expands. Just do this on the other side. My car is Ravenna green, and since I don't have a black tie that's long enough, um, I'll go with Ravenna green, make it more of a design choice. Okay, so I've gotten the boots on and secured, and everything looks really good. So now what I'm going to do is put the tie rod ends back on. Pretty simple. Okay, one final check. Looks like our tie rod ends are back on. The angles match to the old one. And now let's just double check. And it looks like we are exactly where we need to be. And I'll put the castle nuts back on so that I don't lose them. And there you have it. A new rebuilt rack, or an old rebuilt rack from 914 Rubber. New turbo tie rods, which I got from Elephant. And I think this car is gonna handle a whole lot better. Can't wait to get it in the car. So here's the bearing. And what I'm going to do is slip it on over the shaft. Okay, so the steering rack is in and the ride will be so much tighter. It'll be back to OEM or maybe even a little bit better. Enjoy.